I guess it's me. I'm Jay Lehman. I'm here to talk to you about um, teaching a pre-statistics course. I got started um, oh, there. Uh, this last fall, and I'm, I'm repeating uh, teaching the course this spring. And uh, I just want to share a few um, experiences I've had with you. Uh, this all got started with um, some research that our department did over the last 10 years. And, uh, oh, it seems to be, okay. Different slides than I thought. Okay. So, <laughs> in any case, uh, the point of this is if you look through this sequence here, 20% success rate for students. And uh, the spirit behind Pathways is can we do better? And so, this is an answer to that. Uh, so, one could argue that the traditional algebra sequence is an inefficient preparation for stats. And it's not in line with most um, non STEM majors' careers. And uh, so, this pre statistics can be ideal. Uh, where it combines elementary, um, replaces both elementary and real algebra. Uh, the stats course is unchanged, so there's some integrity there, right? So the end, end, end goal is not changed. Um, the UCs and CSUs at this point are, are giving a thumbs up towards this in a general sense, which is encouraging. Uh, here are the topics for the course. Uh, you'll notice most of it's stats, although items 7 and 8 have a bit of algebra there, mostly with linear functions and such. Uh, here's the structure of the course. I don't have a chance to speak through all this, but I want to emphasize it's a six-unit course, and it's really critical. Um, you really need that time to get some group work, group work going and, and go into depth on crucial topics. Uh, typical day for me, basically, I would lecture for anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes, and I turn the students loose working in groups uh, for the remainder of the hour, 50 minutes. Uh, lots of activity going in the classroom. A lot of the times with the well-structured activities, they really don't want my help that much. They're really actively involved with each other. Uh, the prerequisite is arithmetic, and it's meant for students that are going to go on to take stats and no other courses. And this is what I emphasize to the counselors and the students. Uh, here are some typical majors. In fact, these are the exact majors for last semester. This semester, they're pretty much the same. Um, and I was really blown away by the breadth of, of majors here of students that um, really don't need anything besides stats. I think these are three tempting things that one might reach for with a pre-statistics course. I think these are three things that we should avoid at all costs. We made some of these mistakes with the reform movement back in the 90s, and uh, with a fresh slate here, I think we should be mindful of these things. Uh, now, the goal for me in teaching this course is to propel students um, beyond the level, actually, that students in stats might achieve, but just with crucial concepts, not all of them. That would be impossible at all, but with crucial concepts through the six units, all this ample time to dive in and dig deep with certain explorations. This is actually an up-close shot of the dandelion. Who knew, right? Uh, the point here is that we can have a whole different vantage point if we go into great detail. And this is the idea with the collaborative learning to delve into details with certain key concepts. Uh, one example of this is with, um, in stats, we often bridge from frequency histograms to um, uh, the normal curve overlaid on top and saying, hey, it looks kind of the same. But we're robbing the students of a crucial um, uh, cognitive step. And the step that's missing is the density histogram, uh, where density is defined um, as the relative frequency divided by the class width. And the magic behind that is then the, the bars, the area of the bars, are actually equal to relative frequency or probability, depending on your perspective. And this is a great um, foundational way for the normal curve. Uh, here we have a collaborative activity, and the point here is that um, students can discover that the uh, total area of these, these bars would be equal to 1, obviously leading to the normal curve a little bit here, and, um, and then generalize that with any density histogram this would happen. Uh, there's a lot of muscle behind that. Uh, here the point is to take a density histogram and rather than find the um, area of the blue bars, which would take a bit of work, uh, rather do one minus the area of the red. And this is setting the students up for the law of the complement. Okay, so another advantage of density histograms. Uh, and then here we get the big payoff when we finally get the normal curve. This is many weeks later. Uh, if we, you know, if the students are able to tell me that the area on the curve would be one because they see the close match up there between the density histogram and the normal curve. Uh, so nice payoffs with the density histogram. Here are four other threads I don't have time to speak to, but things I go into great detail with my students on, um, and it, with all the collaborative learning and, and focus, and get some nice return on that. And students going to stats are just so much better prepared than from algebra. 
Uh, so remind, just to remind you that by, with the traditional sequence, you have a 20% success rate, which I think is on par with most schools across the state, if not the country. Um, and with the pre-stats versus last fall, a 52% success rate. So it's over uh, twice as much um, success um, in half the time. Now, there was some debate that could go on here in terms of skipping all that algebra, uh, but nonetheless, some exciting um, prospects that are going across the country. So please contact me if you have any questions. Thank you.